Last week on MasterChef Australia, Ellie was on a roll in New York. With the dark by Ellie. Yeah. And won immunity in Central Park. Congratulations. <laughs> but it was bad news for Sun when she crashed out in a soul food challenge. I've come so far and I've learnt so much along the way. Tonight. <laughs> His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. I can't believe Dalai Lama is in the kitchen. And our contestants are cooking his lunch. <laughs> this is a special moment. Who gets to stand next to the Dalai Lama? With guidance from chef and author Kylie Kwong. There we go. There's your coconut juice. And His Holiness. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Each will prepare a vegetarian dish that is close to their heart. But when the pressure's on... One minute to go. Even a dream dish can become a nightmare. The whole bottom half is raw. Who's got candied walnuts on the stove? Oh, Michael? Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's just forget about that. I think this is probably the worst ever moment that I've ever had in the kitchen. Your Holiness, our contestants with your lunch. <laughs> At stake for the ultimate series winner, the chance to work alongside the country's top chefs, a book publishing deal. $100,000 to help realise their culinary dreams and the title of Australia's next master chef. Seven, brand new week, and yeah, stoked to be here. You know, we keep hearing four weeks to go, three weeks to go, and soon it's going to be that finals week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Look>. What? <laughs> <laughs> we got a note. Already? Yeah. We just got back. <laughs> we're going again. We're going to Melbourne. <laughs> oh, we just got off a plane and we're going we're again. <laughs> I sometimes think that the act of bringing food is one of the basic roots of all relationships. For your next challenge, you're going to learn more about this quote and what it means and the person who said it. Who do you think it is? Well, should we go and get ready? I'm going. <laughs> I like what this person's saying, but I've got absolutely no idea who has said this. And if that's supposed to be a clue for what our next challenge is, I'm still a bit in the dark. Each week I keep thinking that surely they can't. Uh, outdo what we did last week. We went to New York. Now all of a sudden we're heading off to Melbourne. Bring it on. Give us whatever you've got. I'm so excited to be in Melbourne about to head off and do another crazy challenge. Our next stop's the Melbourne Exhibition and Convention Centre and those words scare me. I'm pretty sure that centre can house, like, thousands of people. I'm a little bit worried we might have to do, like, the catering for thousands. Walking into the banquet room, it's actually really strange. There is a sense of calm, a sense of peace. This is not like an ordinary MasterChef challenge. Welcome to Melbourne and welcome to your next MasterChef challenge. Tomorrow, you will prepare and cook a meal for a man who transcends celebrity. In fact, he counts celebrities as many of his fans and followers, along with world leaders and 600 million or so other followers. He is 
one of the most recognisable faces on this planet. Tomorrow, you will prepare and cook a meal for His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. <laughs> I grew up in a Buddhist family, so Dalai Lama means a, a lot to me. It would be an honor to meet him in person. The Dalai Lama is the spiritual leader of Tibet. He travels the world with a message of peace and compassion, and he adores food. And the quote that you found this morning, the act of bringing food is one of the most basic roots of all relationships is actually a quote by the Dalai Lama himself. So tomorrow, we want you to feel those words and show us that you understand the real power and emotion that food brings. This is how it's gonna work. Tomorrow, the Dalai Lama will sit down for lunch with four invited guests and the three of us. You'll each make either a vegetarian savory dish or a sweet dish and you'll need to make eight serves in total of each dish. You're gonna have three hours to cook. But here's the kicker. You'll be working to a very strict deadline to which you must adhere to. The meal that you'll cook for the Dalai Lama tomorrow is his main meal of the day. So your food must be ready to be presented to the guests at 12 noon. There will be a winner and there will be a bottom three. The judging will be a shared effort. So make the best, the most joyful dish, and you'll go through to the immunity challenge later in the week. Guys, it's the second last opportunity for you to pick up that immunity pin. The flip side of the coin is we're also looking for the three least impressive dishes. Cook one of those and you'll be straight to the pressure test. From there, someone will be going home with only three short weeks away from the MasterChef Grand Final. I haven't been in a pressure test yet. I don't want to do it now on the verge of making top six. We want you to cook His Holiness the best food he's eaten during his time here in Australia. So we're giving you a mentor to inspire you to greatness. Someone who's cooked for the Dalai Lama before and someone that we all love and adore. What you may not know is she's a Buddhist. Please welcome chef and author, Kylie Kwong. I think Kylie's an amazing woman. I think she's gonna be a really good mentor and she's gonna lead us on the right path. Kylie, welcome back to MasterChef. Lovely Thank to you see for having you again. me. Now, being a Buddhist, this must be very special for you. And you've, of course, cooked for the Dalai Lama. And I'm sure these guys and us want to know what that was like. Well, as you can imagine, it was, well, it was, it was the greatest honour of my life. Kylie's here to just guide you through this whole process. She's going to help you decide what dishes you're going to cook and help mentor you in the kitchen tomorrow. His Holiness will accept graciously anything that is offered to him. He does not like sour food, so let's steer clear of vinegar, lemon juice, lime juice. He loves cheese. He loves bread. He loves noodles, tofu, mushrooms. He loves coriander, loves coriander. He likes desserts, a little bit of a sweet tooth. Not every day you get to cook for the 14th incarnation of a world spiritual leader. This is your moment to centre yourself to let go of ego, to let go of material things, and cook from here, from your very centre. To come back into this room tomorrow and be able to present the Dalai Lama with, you know, hopefully a beautiful dish, it's going to be a very special time. Coming up, cooking starts in the kitchen, but clarity is far from mind as Buddha's delight turns to disaster. Who turned this oven down? Me. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't need the stress at the moment. <laughs> This challenge is very refreshing. We're allowed to cook what we want. There is no restrictions, except it has to be vegetarian. And I think that this is the opportunity everyone's been waiting for, to cook a beautiful dish. 
You're about to cook the Dalai Lama's most important meal of the day. But for you guys, this is a significant day. You are the top seven amateur cooks of this country. We believe in you. You should believe in yourself, because today, I reckon you're all going to cook brilliant food. It's just before 9 o'clock. You've got three hours. All of your cooking and preparation must be done and ready to serve by noon today. And your three hours starts now. Today I'm cooking a goat cheese tortellini with a beetroot puree and a borscht broth. The first thing I need to do is get my vegetable stock on, which is the base of my borscht broth, and uh, it's going to take the longest to cook. It's a dish all about beetroot, really, for me, um, and all about my mum. Um, and it's something that mum and I sort of grew together in our community garden patch. Now, I guess I want to show the Dalai Lama, you know, His Holiness, um, a little bit of me and my family and, and what I love, and, and it's these things, you know, big red beetroots. The dish I'm planning on cooking today is a steamed coconut pudding with a papaya mousse, fresh papaya and a coriander syrup. I know that my focus has to be on that papaya and I cut into the first one, I'm devastated. It just doesn't have that rich colour of Asian papaya that I was hoping for. I tasted it and to me it's still a little bit on, probably on the okay, is slightly... There... Is there another fruit over there that you could substitute? Mangosteens. Mangosteens. They are divine. They're yeah. stunning. I've eaten mangosteen before, but it was a long time ago and I can't fully remember the flavour. But as soon as we break one open and I taste it, I think, yes, I can do something with this. Today for the Dalai Lama, I'm going to cook him a Middle Eastern feast. I'm doing a spice pumpkin chickpea tagine. Um, so I'm also doing some flatbread with that. I'm going to do some smoky eggplant kind of puree. And I'm going to do some um, cheese and mint little fingers because we know the Dalai Lama likes cheese. Today, I'm making a, a vegetarian dish. It's called Buddha's Delight. The Buddha's Delight is a vegetarian stir-fry wrapped in bean curd sheets. Usually, my mum cook that during Chinese New Year, you know, when we get together. On the side, I also want to make some dumplings to go with it. Oh, that's great. So I'm, I'm going to make some... We, we need that, you know, that technique in there. That's what the yeah. judges are looking exactly. for as well. So First thing I have to do is to make a stock for the broth. And the next thing I have to do is to make the dumplings. So for the fillings, they are garlic chives, shiitake mushroom, Coriander, because His Holiness loves coriander. I think the Buddha's Delight is a tasty dish for His Holiness, but I definitely worry that it might be too simple for the judges. Today, for the Dalai Lama, I'm going to cook a mushroom and cheese filled gnocchi roll with cauliflower puree, spinach and basil oil. It's something that I've cooked for my family before. They absolutely loved it. I think the biggest press point for me today is just the consistency of the gnocchi because it's a fine line between getting it right and getting it horribly wrong. The dish I'm making today is a clear Japanese soup with freshly made egg noodles. There's a couple of pressure points with the dish today and the main one being that the soup may, may not be clear, it could still be cloudy. The soup is going to signify how I believe the Dalai Lama wants his mind to be and be able to see the elements within the soup. Today I'll be cooking a Sri Lankan vegetarian curry which will consist of a roti bread, a bean curry, potato curry, a dal and a coconut sambal and rice. I want to make my own coconut milk and I also want to roast some coconut and grate it and use it in my sambal. Oh beautiful. Now you've done this before? Kuma showed me how to do it yes. at the MasterChef house. Okay. But I think I might need a refresher. Okay so let's get, just grab me a bowl that way. Yep. Okay, the back, the back, the blunt. There we go. OK, so there's your coconut juice. Gorgeous. Right. The coconuts are really tough. They're hard to open, but Kylie gives me a hand and by the end of the third coconut, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> That's it. Stronger. That's it. That's the sound. Good girl. Good girl. Cool. Perfect. Great. Great. OK, thank you. This is your big moment, but one hour's gone already, two hours to go. 
Beetroot's the star of this dish. Goat cheese tortellini, the beetroot puree, and a beetroot borscht broth. For that reason, I have to make sure all the four components taste different, otherwise it's just a plate of beetroot. I'm going to boil my beetroots for my puree, uh, then I'll skin them and, and grate them and then just cook them with cream. For my whole beetroots, I'm going to roast them whole in their skin still. And for my borscht, I'm actually going to peel the beetroot, roast it, and then chuck it into the soup and finish cooking it in the soup. So it's got a, a roasted flavour for the soup. of this challenge certainly has me rattled. I've started by having to change my dish in the first minutes. Then I've moved on to using a coconut machine I've never used before and it doesn't seem to want to be my friend. I need to have all three parts of this coconut out before I can start cooking the rest of my dish. And I'm still struggling with getting all the flesh out. For the cheese and mint fingers, I am going to use a filling of potatoes, some cheese, some spices, as well as some pistachios. And I'll just basically saute all that down and let it cool before I then roll it in the spring roll paper. There's a completely different vibe in the kitchen today. It doesn't really feel like a competition. Um, everyone's kind of helping each other. We're standing at the stove and if something's burning, people are getting it off and it's just, it's this really nice feeling. Once I have all the ingredients together to make this leaf soup, the next step is to put it into the slowly simmering water. And so the kombu, the shallots, the chilli, the mirin, the tamari, the dried mushrooms, it all goes into the water to just slowly sort of infuse gently. I'm standing at my bench mincing some garlic when I look up and His Holiness, the Dalai Lama himself, has come into our kitchen to meet us. Clarity. Vision, it's all gone out the window. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm standing at my bench mincing some garlic. Okay, so we're going to meet the seven contestants. When I look up and his Holiness, the Dalai Lama himself, has come into our kitchen to meet us. Oh my God! <laughs> and we're going to meet Danny first, okay? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Carly, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Spices. What is it? Coconut. Oh, coconut, yeah, that's coconut. right. Coconut. <laughs> I told her you like spices. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I, I can't, I can't believe Dalai Lama is in the kitchen. Very good. Oh, very good. Looks very beautiful. Very good. Hello. Oh. Ellie is making you an Italian dish today. Oh. She's making it with her hands. They're all putting in so much effort. <laughs> to be looking into the eyes of the Dalai Lama is just out of this world. You never think that in your wildest dreams you're going to meet Hello. him. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> I think this is probably the most special feeling I've ever had. Yeah, I got the chills. What is this? Cheese. This is cheese. Yes, you like cheese, don't you? Yes. This is a special moment. Who gets to stand next to the Dalai Lama and have him watch over the food that you're cooking and hold your hand and offer you a peanut? Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I got to. <laughs> Only when food touch tongue, then <laughs> I can judge. Oh, yeah. Oh, how much I'm it's, glad it's, it's not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, Dalai Lama touched me. <laughs> His Holiness touched me. It's a very emotional day in the kitchen today. I think everyone's being touched in their own way and is dealing with the emotional side of it in their own way as well. There's quite a few tears, but it's not tears of unhappiness, it's tears of joy. Guys, just one second, look at me. Just want to say one thing. You just met the Dalai Lama. You have one and a half hours to go. For the Buddha's delight, it is a simple stir-fry. The complicated part is definitely the wrapping. Because the bean sheets are so thin, if you're not careful, you will burst instantly. It's 
finally time to get on to making my tagine. I chop up my pumpkin, I prepare my chickpeas, as well as get some onion going. I've already got my roasted spices, so I can just throw them all in together, get it into the oven for about 20 minutes or so before I pour the water in. I'm making my gnocchi. We have to cook for eight people. So I do need a fair amount of gnocchi. I'm not exactly 100% about the quantities that I should have, but I'm just gonna wing it. <laughs> For my pasta, um, I'm going to go with my, my tried and tested dough. It's a little bit more complex than the, you know, just one egg per 100 grams of flour. I go with lots of egg yolks to make it really rich. It's always the case when we have a longer challenge that you sort of dawdle your way through the first few hours and then it gets to the last hour and there's so much to do. When you get a curry in Schlenk, you don't just get one curry. Right. You get lots of different And the things. idea is that the roti is the centrepiece and then you grab little bits of... Yeah. For my Sri Lankan vegetarian curry, I still have to cook my potato curry, cook my bean curry, finish off my sambal, fry off my roti. <sighs> I need to do this all within the next hour. you got to keep a little hole. Once the soup is chilled, uh, it's ready to be introduced to the clarification mix. The brown soup is not going to be clear as in colour, like the water is clear coming out of your tap. It's going to be like see-through, so it'll be brown, but you'll be able to see the bottom of the bowl. That's the, the hope. Time is a ticking. 45 minutes to go. Time to get it together. I get over to the oven and I can't even work out how to turn this thing on, how to change the temperature. I don't know how to work the oven. These are big industrial ovens that I have never seen before. I just want to drop it to 160. Walnuts, candied walnuts. Who's got candied walnuts on the stove? Oh. Michael? Yeah? Hearing Gary yelling and yelling and I didn't pick it up until I heard Who's the candy walnuts? Who's the walnuts? And I'm like, oh, they're my walnuts. Are they gone past it? I don't have time to redo my candy walnuts straight away, and I'll only do them if I have time later. Because although it's just a, you know, extra garnish on my dish, it adds another level of flavour, another texture, and, and for now, the candy walnuts are, are off the dish. It's about 30 minutes to go. I need to check on my tagine to see how it's going. Who turned this oven down? Me. There was nothing in there when I turned it down. I turned it down about 10 minutes ago. Those have been in there for about 20 minutes. Have they? 25 minutes, those pumpkins. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you need it up? I can move it into a... There's nothing I can do. I just need to put the tagine into another oven that's at a high temperature and just hope that's going to cook. As if things can't get any worse, now I'm feeling really guilty. If I've had an impact on her dish and it means it's not going to be cooked properly, oh, I'm just going to feel awful. Oh, I don't need the stress at the moment. <laughs> I've made gnocchi a couple of times, but the consistency is something that really has to be perfect. And I start to panic when I'm forming the dough because it's just not coming together the way I want and the mixture is just, it's really wet. What I do is just make sure that you, you press and fold, right? Rather than mix, yeah. right? Because as far as possible, what you don't want to do is develop the gluten. And that feels, that feels quite nice. And then a yeah. little test. Springing back. Yeah, See that little spring back? So what you want to do now is get a knife, take a little piece off and test it. Because the worst thing that can happen is you roll all of this out, yeah. go to cook it. Okay. <laughs> the thing that's bad about a wet mixture is that it's going to be soft and gluggy and it just won't hold its shape. Okay. Working around the communal stovetop, I can tell that stress levels are rising rapidly. I can see that there's cream and milk overboiling. Kate's running around like headless chook. Michael's forgotten about his walnuts. My beans, <laughs> they're cooking, but I need to run around the kitchen and do other stuff. It's getting pretty hectic. Half 
half an hour ago and they've been inspired, but now we're getting down to the business end. Not long to go, panic set in, things are going wrong. Yeah, there's a few of them in a world of pain. Yep. Ali's one of them. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't know what she's been doing. She's made a gnocchi which she's going to roll and fill, but rather than getting all the filling ready to go so it's got a spoon in it and set yourself up nicely, sieve the potatoes, make the gnocchi, start filling it and cooking, she's made the gnocchi mixture and just let it sit there. Now what's happened is all the water is coming out of the potato, it's getting wetter. I've let the dough sit for too long. It's really moist and gluggy. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I've just chosen a completely wrong dish. Not long to go. Panic set in. Things are going wrong. My gnocchi is too moist, and I know that if I put it in water, it's going to fall apart. A good technique is to wrap the gnocchi in a tea towel, and this makes sure that it cooks the whole way through. For me, I just want to offer the Dalai Lama something, and I don't care what it is, but at this stage, it's not looking good. With all the craziness in the kitchen, we're sharing one, you know, eight burner stovetop. And, you know, in all the confusion, someone's bumped my heat right up and that's not good for my clarification. It's just got to gently sort of bubble away. And, you know, if this has stuffed up my clarification, it, it could ruin the whole dish. You know what it's done? Because this is see where that's cooked and that's not quite cooked. Yeah. I'm in trouble. Everything is everywhere and I'm so out of control. I feel like I need to be in every area of the kitchen all at once. I need more arms and more legs. I've got to get the anglaise on, I've got to get the puddings out of their tins, I've got to get the mango steins peeled and time is running out. <laughs> this is your big moment. Lunch is nearly ready to serve. 15 minutes to go. I'm just finishing my tortellini. And after the disaster of my first batch of candied walnuts, I have just enough time to redo my candied walnuts. I still really have a long list of things I need to do. I'm not letting this beat me. This is how you make roti. I want to present His Holiness the Dalai Lama an absolutely beautiful lunch, and I'm determined to do it. Guys, time to kick it up. Remember, you cannot be late for the Dalai Lama. Come on, guys, you've only got five minutes to go. When I take the gnocchi out of the pot and I realise that it's just mush and that it's not cooking, um... Yeah, I just want to run away. I want to seriously just run away. I think this is probably the worst ever moment that I've ever had in the kitchen. I want to show the Dalai Lama how special food is to me, and the best way to do that is through a dish that you know, I'm really passionate about, and I don't think that I'm going to be able to serve him anything. I'm scraping the knife around the edge, and it's sticking a little bit more than I'd like. And when I tip that first pudding oh. out, the whole bottom half is raw. The top half is cooked beautifully. But these puddings are not cooked. I have to get these back on the heat as quickly as I possibly can. It's the last few moments. I'm getting the finishing touches onto my plate. I would sit down and eat this plate. Today, I wanted to cook a mushroom and cheese filled gnocchi roll. It hasn't worked out, so I will be serving him just sautéed mushrooms. <laughs> let's, let's just forget about that. Let's just focus on this. Pressure's on, one minute to go. You wait till you see his reaction, OK? okay. It's all right. It's all right. Follow me. 
Lee, pick up your plate. We've got to go. Time's up and I have a plate. It's got food on it. It looks kind of like the way I imagined it. This dish is not something that I want to serve to the Dalai Lama. It's not what I set out to achieve. It's really hard for me. Your Holiness, thank you very much indeed for honouring us with your presence oh. on MasterChef oh. and bring oh. your four invited guests oh. with you. Tim Costello, CEO of World Vision Australia. Shanika Fernando from Lentil as Anything Restaurants in Melbourne. Reverend Bill Cruz, founder and CEO of the Exodus Foundation and a secret member of the MasterChef team. Ronnie Khan, founder and CEO of Oz Harvest. Your Holiness, oh. our contestants with your lunch. Walking into that room and Dalai Lama sitting there right in front of us. <laughs> I have to say, I'm a little bit shaky. Your Holiness, these seven beautiful contestants have been cooking all morning and now they are going to offer you their dishes. Thank you. Thank you. Your Holiness, it's one of the most nerve wracking moments of my life I think I've got this big train it's quite heavy I'm sort of probably got my shaky hands going on and I hope it's good I've uh, created a, a Japanese noodle consomme thank you or oh, Indian style Holiness, I have prepared a Middle Eastern feast for you today East, I see oh wonderful hmm? <laughs> your holiness well. Um, I prepared for you a Sri Lankan vegetarian oh. curry. Thank you. Thank you. What is it? Your holiness. <laughs> <laughs> Today I cooked for you um, Lohanzai, which is Buddha's delight. Thank you. Uh, Your holiness, today I've prepared for you a, a goat's cheese tortellini with a beetroot puree and a beetroot soup. Thank you. Dalai Lama, today I've created for you a dessert, a coconut pudding with fresh mango steam and a coriander anglaise sauce. Thank you. Your Holiness, um, today I had a bit of a disaster in the kitchen. Um, it's not what I wanted on the plate. The dish that I wanted to cook um, is something that um, I cook for my family a lot. I wanted to share it with you today, but I didn't get on the plate. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well done. Good on. When the Dalai Lama holds my hand, it's just, it's truly a memorable moment for me. You know, it doesn't matter what happened and it doesn't matter what's on the plate because it's just food. I've created some beautiful elements on the plate. I just want him to enjoy what I've got for him, no matter what, how bad it is. Your Highness, would you do us the honour of blessing the food, please? Sanjay and Sanjay, Shujay and Sanjay, Sanjay, all the number of members. Tim? Loving God, bless this food, these wonderful young people, and we remember those in our world who won't get to eat today. Amen. Shanika? I'd like to give a Sinhalese Sri Lankan blessing. Subhaharyak. Uh, Reverend Bill? 
I just want to thank you. From, I can see the beauty in all of you, where it's all come from. So for families, for friends, for all that's holy in the world, we give you thanks. Amen. I'm going to give a Hebrew blessing over the food. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed be the Lord that has taken the bread from the earth and shared it with us. Kali, contestants, thank you so much. We'll taste the first dish now. We leave the room that the Dalai Lama is eating in and we move into a service area. We've got a few minutes to be able to plate each dish that will then be taken to the Dalai Lama and his guests. Are you holiness? Are you hungry? Would you like to eat the first course? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's get the first course in, and that belongs to Hayden. Your Holiness, your first course. Oh. Yes, please start, start off. Oh, very good. Tasteful, very good. Too much mushroom, not good. But here, very good. And that, what do you call kasati? Tofu. Tofu. Well, Chinese word, tofu. Very good. I love eating and thinking that he chose a broth with clarity yeah. because that's what His Holiness represents. To me, that was so special. Well, the next dish we're about to taste belongs to Alana, and that's a Middle Eastern feast. Mm. food and I travel and this is as good as I've tasted this is just fantastic I think each one have their own obsidian special dishes mm -hmm. very good now let's move on to Danny's dish Danny's done a, a true Sri Lankan thali so let's get in the next dish Does this look Sri Lankan to you? It does. It's like being at home. <laughs> How good is this roti bread? It's absolutely flaky, buttery, and delicious. I think each have their own sort of taste. This also good, this also good. The bread, really delicious. Well, I was, I was actually looking at the way it's presented, because each bit is lovely, but presenting it in these bowls, shows that you can eat each bit but enjoy the whole lot yeah and that's a lot like humanity mm. in a way that we're all different but somehow we all somehow fit together and somehow the, the taste of all of us is nice but we need to get the next dish in which belongs to billy My first time for Buddha's belly. Hey, you know, you know what's interesting is it doesn't have the same clarity. Hayden's broth is beautifully clear. All the all the elements of the dish really stood out. Whereas this one, it's a little bit muddy in terms of flavours. I think this one, compared to the bread, I prefer bread. 
<laughs> Your Holiness, it's time to taste the next dish. That belongs to Michael, which is a pasta dish. Can I say that the walnut that's been yeah. candied, uh, it, it is n number one texture, but the flavour just offsets the, the saltiness of that goat's cheese, the sweetness of that beetroot. It's beautiful. Well, Michael's done a really good job, so let's get the um, next dish out, which belongs to Ellie. I know that Ali has really struggled in this challenge and she's very upset with what she's presenting. So I want to help her. This isn't the challenge to be competitive. This is the challenge to share and help one another. We all have these beautiful dishes that need to get out to the Dalai Lama. We need to help each other out. Do you reckon I should quickly plan pan fry it? I think you might. Yeah, I reckon okay. you pan fried it. We're presenting food to the Dalai Lama and it's got to be the best food that the seven of us together can serve him. The gnocchi, it looks okay. I'm going to serve it. I know that it's not what I'd, I set out to achieve by any means, but I need to serve something. Michael's done a really good job, so let's get the um, next dish out, which belongs to Ellie. She's obviously, uh, during her plating up period, got some gnocchi up. Um, but it's, mine's actually quite raw and doughy. I think they tried their best. Well, it's time for our final dish, the sweet dish, cooked by Kate. Very exciting for me, actually, because I suddenly tasted something that reminded me of home. Okay. Yep. Mm. Mangosteen. Yeah. Yeah, mm. the mangosteen, which is the little fruit on the top. The, the coriander custard is an interesting addition. I'm not, I'm not so sure it, it works for my palate, I have to say. I, I keep expecting to taste savoury and taste sweet. I can't really taste coriander. Your Holiness, what do you think of the quality of the food that you've eaten today? Uh, my knowledge, these things are very limited. So whatever I get, I accept. Have you enjoyed eating the food? I think all mammals, <laughs> when they get food, is very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Each one, so each one have one special sort of taste. Yeah. Uh, so it is own sort of some kind of beauty. Your Holiness, thank you so much for being part of Master Chef and sharing um, the meal with us. Yeah. It's been a pleasure and honour for our contestants to cook for you. And we hope to see you back in Australia very soon. Thank you. Thank you. At the end of his meal, the Dalai Lama comes to thank us. It's quite a, a humbling moment. Although Buddhist monk, you see, no right to prefer this food to that food. According to Buddhist tradition, whatever you get, you must accept. So now here, I appreciate all your sort of effort make such a beautiful, tasteful sort of food. Food is very important. 
The Dalai Lama is just a man, but he symbolizes so much more. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It just thank reminds you. me thank that you. today's challenge is about not necessarily about winning or losing. It's about sharing thank food. You. It's about the giving, the offering of food to and enjoying it. That was an incredible experience. That was an amazing day. You look exhausted, and I'm not surprised, because not only did you work physically hard, but emotionally, that was a hell of a ride. As a Buddhist monk, His Holiness would not pass judgment on what you cooked. So today's decision rested with the three of us and the feedback that was given by the other guests on the table. We had to choose a winner and the bottom three. If you win this challenge, you get a shot at immunity. It's almost a guaranteed place in the finals week. Let's start with the good news. The two dishes that we thought were the standouts of today. When I call your name, step forward. Danny. How could this challenge get any better? Not only have I cooked for His Holiness, I've cooked a great dish and now I'm in the top two. Danny, fantastic shrank and thali, a beautifully balanced dish. Six elements, all perfectly executed, showing great skill and a really true sense of flavour as well. And that roti, gee. Next contestant. Michael. <laughs> After the experience I've had today, you know, to top that off with a top two dish, it's so amazing. It feels, feels incredible. Michael, that dish looks so beautiful on the plate and the flavour's exploded on the palate. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Makes you very happy. <laughs> the winner. You know, I've stood on the balcony and watched a lot of people cook for immunity. It's the one thing I haven't done yet. I'm, I'm desperate to, to have a win. If I want to go further, then having an immunity pin will allow me to do that. The winner is... The winner is Danny. <laughs> Thank you. I cannot believe that I have cooked with my heart and my soul and it has paid off. Oh my god. I couldn't ask for anything more. It's so hard when you've got two dishes that everyone loves so much, and it does come down to little things. I can't believe it. No, you did, you did very good. Um, but, Michael, so long as you're always in that final two, you'll find yourself standing at the finale. And that's what this is all about. It's about getting to the final at this point. Michael, well done. But now, both of you, get out of here. Well Thank done. you. See you guys. Thank you. We now have to announce who prepared and cooked the three least impressive dishes of the day. A difficult task considering how high the standard was. I'm feeling quite concerned now that there's only five of us that I may well be in the bottom three. I don't really want to be in the bottom three. <laughs> Nobody does. Alana, Hayden, You're safe. Hayden and Alana, go and join the other two. Good cooking today. Well done. Thank you. See you guys. Well done. Well done. Well done. You're yeah, leaving the, the three standing there and so much feeling had gone into the food that if it was sort of knocked back and you're in that bottom three, it would be extra, extra tough. Kate, Ellie, Billy, I'm sorry. Across the table, and of course the three of us voted that your three dishes were the three least impressive of the day. That means we'll be facing a pressure test tomorrow. And from there, someone will be going home. Billy, we love the concept behind your dish. We love that little plump 
Buddha's belly in the centre of the bowl, the fact that it had all those beautiful mushrooms. It, it was delicious. I think what we felt was that it just wasn't big enough and punchy enough to compete with the top dishes of the day, and that's why you find yourself in the bottom three. Making mistake makes us stronger, so, you know, I'll stand tall or become stronger the next day, so, yeah. Kate, that was a good pudding. It was light, it was delicious. I liked it. I wanted more of that coriander custard. It needed more flavour. But the question really, was it the right thing to put with that pudding? And for us, it was the mangosteen that was crying out to be recognised and it was lost in amongst that coriander custard and, of course, that soft, sweet pudding. Maybe something to think about, but that's why you find yourself in the bottom three. OK, so I'm in the bottom three. Every time I come into this kitchen, I'm going to fight and tomorrow will be no different. Ellie, you know you made some mistakes in the kitchen. That rolled gnocchi wasn't good from the start. You made some critical mistakes. Knowing that I have to face a pressure test tomorrow again, <laughs> it's not a great feeling by any means. Ellie, overnight, you've got a big decision to make. You're the only one wearing an immunity pin. The question is, do you use it? Do you save yourself to fight another day? Or do you take a chance and compete with the others in the pressure test? You are our queen of pressure tests. That's something to bear in mind. All of you bring some fight into the kitchen tomorrow. You want to be here. You want to be in that final two. Trust me, there is more to come. Make the most of it. Get out of here. <laughs> One week, you're in New York, and the next week, you're in the bottom three. Things definitely do change quickly in this competition. Tomorrow night, Billy, Ellie and Kate front up for elimination. But which way will Ellie go? What would you do, George? Well, I like risk, Gary. I love the thrill. This is probably one of the hardest decisions that I've had to make this whole competition. But one thing's for certain. For one of you, the dream is about to end. Then later in the week, the last team challenge and it's first class all the way. The kicker, the first lounge has a policy. Order to table, 20 minutes. Oh, shit. Sorry, the bun burn again. It's a challenge full of turbulence. Uh, start again on the fish. Ah. Yes, chef. I really hope that I'm not letting my team down here. You're under pressure. This is a real kitchen. Move your butt. 